Day two of review, number one, we're multiplying two fractions. When we multiply fractions, how do, what's our steps for multiplying fractions? We're going to add the exponents, yep. Remember when it's a multiplication sign, it's just like one giant fraction, okay? Making that one giant fraction makes this simple, okay? So if I, I can do lots of different things. Um, if I'm dealing with numbers on top, I got 32 on top. That's my only number. Okay, Zaru just said that we add exponents when we're multiplying. So, Anthony, what's x to what power is going to be on top? How many total x's do I have up there? Four. I got three right there and one more there. So it's x to the fourth. And what about my y's? Four again, because I got two and two. So it's y to the fourth. Okay, then we're dealing with the bottom. Here I've got this eight here. And that 3 there, what am I going to do with the 8 and the 3? I'm going to multiply those. That gets me 24. Again, I've got x's. x squared and x to the 5th gets me x to the 7th. And then a y cubed. Okay, that's me putting them together. I put them together first. Now I'm going to simplify from there. So now when I'm simplifying, let's do the numbers first. So I've got 32 and 24. I'm going to try to reduce those. What things could I reduce both of those by? I could reduce them by 2. If I reduced it by 2, it'd get me 6. Do, oh, it would get me 6. No, still no. 16 and 12. Could I still reduce them? I could have gone 8. Now I'm going to go 4 more. So if I reduce 16 by 4, I'd get 4. And 12 by 4 would get me 3. Eventually, no matter how you do it, you would reduce to 4 thirds eventually. Okay, there's lots of different ways of reducing. Let's look at x's. Where are there more x's on top or on bottom? Bottom, so it's going to go on bottom. What do I do with the 7 and the 4? Subtract. 7 minus 4 gets me 3 on bottom. Where are there more y's on top or bottom? Top, it's 4 minus 3, so it's y to the 1. It's y to the 1st or just y. There's my answer. That one's not too bad. Number 2 is simplifying. In order to simplify, remember the cardinal rule, the thing that you cannot do is this. That's the worst thing you can do. If I only teach you one thing this semester, don't do that. That's bad. Okay? You can't cancel with fractions when there's plus or minus signs around it. So remember, instead, what we had to do was we needed to factor first. If you can factor a problem, we're going to try to factor it first. So we learned how to, or we reminded ourselves how to factor yesterday, so that shouldn't be too bad. We're breaking both sets of parentheses up here. Cessio, what two numbers can multiply together to get me 14? 2 and 7. 14 and 1. Those are my two choices. Which one of those two is going to add or subtract to get me 5? 2 and 7. So 2, 7. Which one, uh, what's the 2 going to be? Is 2 going to be positive or negative? 2 is negative, yep. The 7 is positive. Because if I took 7 minus 2, that gets me 5. And 7 times negative 2 gets me negative 14 like I wanted. Then I got my 8 here. Sabrina, what numbers can multiply together to get me 8? 2 and 4. 8 and 1. One of those combinations need to add to get me negative 6. 2 and 4. And what's got to be true with both of them? They both need to be negative because negative 2 minus 4 gets me negative 6. And negative 2 times negative 4 gets me 8. Once I've factored, I don't really care about this anymore. I don't really care about that anymore. I'm just looking to reduce. Remember, if you can reduce uh, factors, they have to be exactly the same. Is there anything that's exactly the same on top and bottom that I can reduce? I got an x minus 2. I got an x minus 2 right there. I got an x minus 2 right there. Those two things cancel. So all I have left is x plus 7 over x minus 4. That's my answer. That thing that was left over and that thing that was left over. There's my answer. Questions on two. Those two aren't too bad. It's the next two that I'm worried about more than anything. Number three in particular. Number three is the big daddy of the day. This one's the toughest one. Okay, make sure we're following through. We are trying to solve here, right? I? We're going to do something similar to that. Remember when we solve fractions, if it has an equal sign, we really want to get rid of fractions as quick as we can because it's going to make our life easier. And the way we get rid of fractions is by finding the LCD. Okay? 
we want to solve, we want to get rid of the fractions. So we are looking at our denominators and trying to get rid of some stuff. Thoughts on what my LCD is going to be? Cameron, what do you think? X plus 2 and then X plus 5. Good. It's both things because I've got both things in my denominator. Once we find our LCD, we just found it. We want to get rid of fractions. So the way we do that is we multiply every numerator by that LCD. So I'm going to take this right here and multiply by X plus 2 and X plus 5. And I'm going to take this 7 right here and multiply by X plus 2 and X plus 5. And then the, the thing that we forget most often is don't forget that 1 right there. I got to multiply that 1 right there by X plus 2 and X plus 5. That's the key to this problem. That's what's going to make this one difficult. So, uh, Sammy, what can I do with that first fraction right here? Th I'm looking at this thing right here. Oh, this thing right here. What can I do with that fraction? The x plus 2s. I've got an x plus 2 and an x plus 2 right there. Good. Those cancel. What am I going to have to do with that x and x plus 5 then? We're going to have to distribute. So x times x is x squared, and then x times 5 is plus 5x. She simplified that first one. Seth, what about this next fraction? What can I do with that thing? X plus 5. That's going to cancel. I've got that 7 and x plus 2 left over, Seth, so what am I going to have to do with that? What do I have to do with this 7 and that x plus 2? Distribute, so 7x, bless you, plus 14. Cool, did that. Not too bad. Here's the last thing. This is the thing that's difficult. What else do I need to do here? Distribute by 1, but the 1 doesn't really matter. But the thing that is going to matter is I need to foil this whole thing together. This thing right here, I'm going to have to foil this. x times x gets me x squared. And x times 5 gets me 5x. And 2 times x gets me 2x. And 2 times 5 gets me 10. This, again, I'm telling you, this is the hardest problem on the test, and it's not real close. Make sure you know what you're doing here. Any questions to that point? Now we're going to figure it all out. Yep, we're not done yet. What can I do at this point now to make this thing easier? Combine like terms. So I've got x squared here. I've got 12x there plus 14. On the other side, I've got x squared plus 7x plus 10. And just combine terms. I'm going to get x's on the same side. I want to get rid of this x squared, so what could I do to get rid of that x squared? I'm going to subtract on both sides. If I subtract it on both sides, what can happen then? They cancel. They're gone. Yeah, not divide because it's not by multiplying by anything. It's, it's being added, so I'm subtracting it. Okay, cool. We got that. Now it's just, now it's an easy problem. It took us a minute, but now it's easy. Now it's algebra one. Subtract 7x from both sides. And I'm going to go ahead and add the 14, or subtract the 14 from both sides. So I get 5x equals negative 4. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. That's my final answer, negative 4 fifths. Again, I'm telling you, that is by far the, one of the more challenging questions we've dealt with all year, and it's on that final. So make sure we understand what's going on. Questions on that part so far? Really, we have one more real long problem today, and then we're done with the tough stuff. So we got one more here. Stick with me. I know that one wasn't exciting. Any questions on three? Let's go to four. Number four, we're adding. We are adding fractions. In order to add fractions, what do you have to have? Common denominators. Right now, are these denominators the same? No. Yeah, we're, let's, let's factor that real quick. x squared minus tw 25, remember that gets you x minus 5 and x plus 5 because those two things multiply together, you get negative 25, and they add to get 0. So I factored this thing first if I can. 
We need common denominators. We want them to be the same. We're not getting rid of denominators this time. We're getting the same denominators. What does this first fraction need in its denominator that this second fraction has? x plus 5. My common denominator is going to be x minus 5 and x plus 5. x minus 5 and x plus 5. And in the end, my answer is going to be x minus 5 and x plus 5. In order to make that true, I need to multiply this first fraction by x plus 5 on top and bottom. Therefore, I get the things I want on bottom. Okay, I got a common denominator. I set this whole thing up. Now it's just a matter of doing it. I need to distribute this 9 to that x plus 5. So I get 9x plus 45. What's the next, or next numerator going to be? 2. There's nothing else with it. It's just 2. So to get my answer, now that I have common denominators here, now that those are the same, I'm just going to add 9x plus 2, or I'm sorry, 9x plus 45 plus 2. Or in other words, 9x plus 47. Done. Questions there? Properties of graphs. We've got a graph right there. We're talking about domain. When we say domain, what does domain mean for us? Domain means x's. So I'm looking to see the left side of my graph to the right side of my graph. So tell me stop when I reach my graph for the first time. Right there, negative 10. That's the first x value that I use. And you're going to bracket that thing all the way till you get to the end. So from, did we do brackets in here? No, I just, all right, cool. I just confused with pre-calc, my bad. Negative 10 is less than or equal to. Is that what we did? Yeah, all right, cool. Less than or equal to x. Tell me stop when I reach the end of my graph. My fault. Oh, do this. Stop right there to 10. From negative 10 to 10. X is in between there. But when we talk about range, what is range going to mean? Range means y. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We all, what you just said, bottom to the top. Okay, we we'll always go bottom to the top. So we're going to start down here. Tell me stop when I reach the bottom of my graph. Stop right there. Stop right there. That ordered pair is wrong. Don't, don't believe that ordered pair. What? That should be a negative four. I don't know where that negative two came from. Sorry, it's negative four. That's a bad, bad label. Because that's where that line is. It's right there at negative four. I just labeled it wrong. So negative four is my range, is the y value. Negative 4 is less than or equal to, what letter should I put in the middle? Y. y. Less than or equal to Y is less than or equal to, we're trying to find the top of my graph. Stop right there at 10. Negative 4 is less than or equal to Y is less than or equal to 10. Those are my domain and range. This one's not really tough. We didn't give you a bunch of them. Maximums. When we talk about maximum, we're talking about the highest points in this graph where it changes from increasing to decreasing, change from going up to going down. Show me with your fingers how many maximums do you have on this graph? Two different, two different maximums. My two maximums here. Do we write them as ordered pairs or points? Or x equals. Okay, good. Sorry, I teach this in two different classes and we teach it slightly different. Negative 2, or I'm sorry, positive 210, that's one of them. What's the other one going to be? That one right there, negative 2, 6, y is 10, 8, not a maximum. That's where it stops. It doesn't go back down. It's got to go up and down again. So those are my two maximums. Because it goes from going up to going down. It doesn't have to be the tallest point. Just that it goes up and goes down. It's a peak. Minimum, show me with your fingers. How many minimums does this graph have? Show me with your fingers. How many minimums does it have? Three, negative eight, negative four is one, because that's the lowest one. That one's pretty obvious. But don't forget about zero, one right there. And also don't forget about five, one right there. Remember, when we talk about minimums, we're talking about the valleys, the places on my graph that my graph goes from down to up. 
Down to up. Those are my minimums. Show me with your fingers how many intercepts is this graph going to have when you get done. Show me with your fingers how many intercepts is it going to have. Should be three. There's three different ones. See if you can find them. Negative 10, 0 is one. Negative 5, 0 is the second one. And 0, 1. It's the places where it crosses the x and y axis. So these two, th where it touches this line right here, and when it touches this line right there, it touches one, two, three times. The last one is finding f of 2. So if we're finding f of 2, what does that 2 represent? What's, yeah, 2 is the x, because it normally says f of x. But now it says f of 2. So you're going everywhere on your graph where x is 2. So go to where x is 2. Write down your y value. It's 10. Questions on that chunk? Yep, f of 2. So the 2, remember when it's in parentheses, that's your x value. So you went to where x is 2, which is right here, and went up on my graph. x is 2, that means my y is 10. All right, we just did this a second ago. Let's do it again. Uh, square root, what's the shape that we call the square root? T-pod is square root. X, regular X is a line. This is square root, so that's T-pod. My rule for that is 1, 3, 5. Next one's absolute value. Absolute value gets you a V-shape. And that one's just 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, make a V. Next one is cube root. When you have a cube root, it gets you an Egyptian graph. Remember, my Egyptian shape is 1, 7. x squared, that one's a parabola. Parabolas, anytime it has a square or a square root, 1, 3, 5. My last one here, broken parabola. It's got an x cubed, so broken parabola. S curve sometimes, but not as much in here. Broken. That's 1, 7 right there. This one's 1, 7, 2. Yep, when it has a 3 with it, it's 1, 7. OK? Now we're going to actually graph one. So we're going to have to remember some rules here. Graphing, negative x, x minus 2 squared plus 5. Our shape is a parabola, so it's a 1, 3, 5. Did this graph flip? What made it flip? The negative sign. When you have a negative sign in front like that, it's going to flip your graph. This thing right here, that negative made me flip. Left and right, remember if it goes left or right, it's what's added or subtracted inside the parentheses. So which number is moving me left or right? this negative 2, which direction does that negative 2 take me? Does that take me to the left or does that take me to the right? You do the opposite. When it's inside of parentheses, you do the opposite. So that one takes us to the right. That 2 takes us to the right. The up and down, remember up and down is what's tagged on the end. And so in this case, I've got this 5 right here. Which direction does that 5 take you? up you do the opposite or you do what it says when it's tagged on the end you do what it says so it's going up so I'm going right to up five there's my starting spot it's a parabola so it's a u-shape one three five but it's negative so since it's negative it's opening down so I'm going down one over one down three over one down five one two three four five over one Questions on that? So all of this stuff we've learned in the last month, so hopefully we should be able to go pretty quick through this. Okay? Find the first five terms of the sequence. One, two, three, four, five. The first term is negative 13. 
The difference is 11. If the difference is 11, what am I doing each time? I'm adding 11, so negative 13 plus 11 gets you negative 2. Plus 11 again, 9. Plus 11 again gets you 20. And then 31. I didn't have to teach you a whole lot, hopefully, for that. You just keep adding 11. Questions on the first one? The next one asks us to find the seventh term of the geometric sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first term is four. The ratio is three. So if we're talking ratio, what does ratio mean for us here? Multiplying. We are multiplying by three. So you could use a fancy formula here. I think at this point, it's just easier to do it seven times. Seven's not that big of a number. So four times three is going to get me 12. Multiply by three again. 36, multiply by 3 again, 108, 324, 972, 2,916. Just keep hitting that times 3 button until you get to the seventh one. If you write it out, you should be good there. Questions on that chunk? Arithmetic, geometric, or neither, let's not, I'm not going to do those right this second. Arithmetic means what? Addition. Adding, the same thing. Geometric means multiplying, and neither means you're not adding or multiplying the same number each time. That number's already in order, so all we're doing is mean, median, and mode. If we're doing median, or mean is the first one, what's another word for mean? Mean is the average, which means you are taking all of the numbers. You are adding them up, and you're dividing by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Divide by 10. Do that. All right, it's 11. We take all the numbers, and then we divide by 10 because there's 10 numbers. It sounds like we are getting 110 divided by 10. The average is 11. Take them all, divide by 10. Median is the next one. What does median mean for us? The middle. So if I've got 10 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there is not just one number in the middle. There are two. So there's 9 and 10. If there's 9 and 10, what's the middle going to be? 9.5. What's in the middle of that? That's the new middle of my graph, 9.5. Once I find it, okay, I don't need to do that. That's my middle. Cool. Mode. What is the, what's another word for mode? Most, most common. Whatever one happens the most. Which one happens the most? Seven happens the most because it happens twice. Range means the biggest minus the smallest. So 25 minus 5. My range is 20. Questions there? Next one, we are doing the box and whisker chart. So remember, the first thing we really want to do is write them in order. They're written in, or in order. It's vertical, so sometimes that screws with us. Be smart here if you want to write them out. That's probably not an awful idea. When we tried to do it vertically before, I know I had a lot of students mess it up. So I'm going to write it horizontal. That way we don't mess it up. Three, seventy-eight. All right, there's my numbers. They kind of run together, but we can see it. The smallest number is 25. The biggest number is 78. Man, that's really ugly right here. I got to rewrite that. 50, 50, 50, 53. All right, that's a little better. Median is the one in the middle, so I got to count. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I want the seventh number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 45 is the one in the middle. That's the middle. So if that's the middle, then I'm counting these numbers here. Okay, I'm looking at these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. What is the middle of those six numbers? The 240s. So right there is the middle. It's still 40. Say 47. It's going to be these two numbers. It's right there. It's 50. 
IQR means inner quartile range, or in other words, you take this number, your Q3 minus Q1. 50 minus 40, that's 10. Is the cheetah an outlier? To figure that out, the cheetah is the upper one. So this is the lower and the upper fence. We're trying to decide those things. Remember to find lower fence. You take Q1, 1 1.5 times my IQR. Or in other words, 40 minus 15. It's 25. Do I have a lower outlier? No, I've got 25, but nothing lower than that. That's my fence. Remember, if that's my fence, it's saying nothing can be lower than 25, and nothing is lower than 25. Upper fence, we do the same thing, Q3. So 50 plus 1.5 times 10, or 50 plus 15, which is 65. Do I have an upper outlier? That's where 65 would fall. That's my fence. That 78 is hanging out by itself. So yeah, 78 is an outlier. Seventy-eight is an outlier. So when I go to graph these things, remember what this looks like. I put these three things on my graph. So I'm marking at 40. I'm marking at 45. I'm marking at 50. Make my box. I'm putting one minimum at 25, so a dot right there. What am I doing at 78 over here? Asterisk, yep, it's an asterisk. So 78 is an asterisk because it's an outlier. Where is my next point going to be? The one that wasn't the outlier. So the next one was 53. So I'm putting a dot right here at 53 and connecting it like that. Tough stuff.